My name is Maddie Silver. Why don't you come get to know me, step by step, on this little journey we'll take. Step one. Bum, bum, bum. Step number one. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, so step number one. First thing you should know about Maddie Silver is um I like to wear red scarves. I mean I mean just look at this combo. Red hair, red scarf, booyah, fair skin. I mean, it just makes me pop for shizzle. And um so what does the red scarf represent? I mean that's pretty important. Uh in my society, the red represents that's what it represents. And, but, illicit. You know? Like, the naughty. So, um, by wearing the red scarf, you know, I'm telling all those fellows out there, like, hey, you know what I'm up to. Only, in my case, I'm, I'm not too much of a get-around-town kind of girl, you know? I'm kind of, I'm kind of bad in my own little ways, you know, in my own spheres. I'm, I'm not all over town. I just got one guy that I like. Unfortunately, he's married to Miss, <laughs> you know. So, um, you know, it's just kind of a bad situation. But because of my situation. Step two. It was an evening just like this, in the cool, crisp winter air. We were walking home together, and he pointed out the hill where my friends went sledding, and he said he would take me coasting there once. And, well, we did eventually. But this night, when you took me home from the church dance, it was the first time I knew that his feelings were the same as mine. It was the first time that we were ever really alone together. And that meant so much. It was, it was the perfect evening. And I wish we could have shared more together. Step three. I think supper is just about ready. Oh, look at this pretty pickle dish. Oh, it's broken. Oh no, what am I going to tell Zena? Zena will find out about the pickle dish, Ethan. What are we going to do? She only uses those pickle dishes for really special occasions, and even then she, like, rarely ever takes them out. Here I am, taking it out, and then I break it. What are we going to do? Step four. This is a hill where it all began. That hill right there. You staying me at the train station and we had nothing to lose. We were both trapped by society and by the ways of life. We both loved each other, but there's no way we could ever be together. The only way to be together would be in death. So we decided to take a sled ride, crash into this big oak, and die there together. Die in each other's arms. Die together on that cold night. But unfortunately, our wish of dying together did not come true. But instead, we were both injured very badly and severely. And Zena had to care for us for the rest of our days. And we both had to be in misery, staring at each other and not being able to do anything. Not being able to show our love to one another. Not being able to do the things we wanted to do together. 
that was how we lived the rest of our days. Step five. Zena, where were you? This fire is getting low. Look at it. You need to get more logs, you need to get my slippers, and you need to get my medicine. And hurry up for gosh sakes. Where's Ethan? It's a blizzard out there. The worst this winter. It's getting dark and he's not home. Where is he? You better be home soon. Explanations by Maria. When Manny was wearing the red scarf in the beginning, it didn't necessarily mean that she was a, you know, well, you know, <laughs> but it just kind of represented her youngness and her, her beauty and her liveliness, and that's what drew Ethan to Maddie versus Ethan to Vina, because Zena was just a total foil to Maddie. You know, just totally different, not lively, not exciting, not young, <laughs> you know, so. When Ethan was walking home with, um, Maddie, that was a big point in the book, because, um, up until that point, Ethan and, um, Maddie had never really had any moments alone with each other, and so, <clears throat> when they... That was their first moment ever being alone together. And so, I don't know, there, there was a chance for them to be more open with each other and show some of their feelings. And so, um, that was when Ethan offered to take Maddie sledding, which is obviously more of like a, I don't know, flirty sort of thing. <laughs> you wouldn't just do that with any girl, especially when you're married. So, um, so yeah. Oh no, the pickle jar is broken. <laughs> yeah, this was a big point in the book. Okay, so, not only was this another chance for them to be alone, but Zine was out of the house. You know, what happens then? <laughs> we all know what happens then, or what's wanted to happen. Okay, enough with the pickle jar stuff. <laughs> okay, so anyway... Um, Maddie obviously likes Ethan, and so she wanted to make a special dinner. But, in order to make a special dinner, she had to break some of Zeno's rules, which were never, ever, ever use this pickle dish. They say in the book that store-buy, I don't really exactly know what that means, but I think it just means it's expensive, and it was given to Zena at her wedding, so it's obviously, like, sentimental to her, and so, you know... Maddie really didn't have any right to use the pickle dish. <laughs> but she did anyway. And, um... And the cat broke it or something. He, like, scooted it off the table and it shattered, you know. And Ethan's like, oh crap, you know. Because now the pickle jar is broken. And of course the unit's gonna find out. And, um... It happened when she was gone. So it's like, why were you using the pickle dish when I was gone, hmm? You know? So, this whole scene just kind of represents, like, Maddie showing affection towards Ethan, and also just kind of the glass is shattered, you know? The secret's out. Zena knows. So, um, you know, just kind of the whole thing of, like, you're gonna get caught, and there's gonna be punishments for what you do. So... Um, the pickle dish also represents, since Maddie took it out, it's kind of her way, symbolically, symbolically saying like, oh, I want to do this with you. Zena's gone, now's her moment. Moving in, you know? So. So the big question is, why was Ethan and Maddie heading to the train station? Well... After the whole pickle dish incident, you know, Zena was kind of like, I mean, she was already kind of like to Maddie, but now after the pickle dish thing, it's like, whoa, way too much. So, um, yeah. So Zena was mad. She's like, yeah, I need to get rid of Maddie. And since Maddie is her cousin, 
she has every right to get rid of her. You know, if you then ask her to say it imply an affair, which obviously there is going on one. There is, there is going on one. There is one going on. However, you know, you don't want to blatantly state it. So, you think you can do anything. And so, yeah. Uh, Xena was like, yeah, you know, I, I already got a new housemaid coming. I already sent for her and everything, so you need to take Manny away. So, there they go. They're heading to the train station. And it's nighttime, and they both know they like each other, and, you know, they get to the train station, and they're like, I can't live without you, you know? Like, what is my life going to be like? How am I ever going to survive? Because I have no money. Yeah. Another thing about Manny is her parents got their money illegally so and then after they died she had nothing and she had like a bad name because of her parents so yes I mean Maddie had like nowhere to go so Ethan was kind of Ethan and Xena were like her only hope um and so you know how the impact the crash had on both Maddie and Ethan was pretty drastic since they didn't die when they um, hit the tree it was it ended up with Maddie becoming like Xena because she knew that she would never get happiness because she could just never be with Ethan and Xena would always be between them and um, I mean and since now she <laughs> has no she can't care for herself it's like what's the point of living so um yeah so I'm sure that Maddie just kind of went into a depression because I mean honestly it just would have been better if she had died both for her and for everyone else um and then on Ethan since Maddie did live and he did too and they're both severely injured now he has to let Xena take care of them, which is just weird. And now that Manny has turned into Xena, it's just like, wow, I have two Grinches living in my house. Yeah. So his dream of being with Manny never came true. And dying with Manny never came true. And he's stuck here on this farm that he doesn't like. And he has no money to get a proper education and to do what he wants, so here he is living a life that he doesn't want to lead, and he has two women in his house who he probably doesn't like anymore, so...